last portion of this performance course talks about top of descent calculation. Top of descent calculations are manual mental calculations that the crew should be able to perform continuously to ensure proper descent management. And the whole purpose of descent management is to ensure that when we start our descent from top of descent and down, that we keep the operational cost as low as possible. Ideally, we want to fly from 38,000 feet at top of descent and assume a three degree glide path all the way down until we're ready to configure the aircraft for straight in approach. We want to, during the descent, keep the engines in idle. If we can, from top of descent until we start configuring the aircraft, keep the engines in idle, then we have obtained the lowest possible operational cost. This is not always possible because we are under ATC guidance and due to traffic flow, management, delays, etc. We may be getting radar vectors, we may be getting holding, which then adds to the cost. But our operational objective should be to try to descend the aircraft and manage all the way down to make small adjustments, keeping the engines in idle, lowering the cost. And to do that, pilots must always know when to descend and in doing the descent, know if you're above or below this optimum glide path, what your optimum vertical speed should be and how to correct. And that's the aim of this part of the presentation. When we start our descent, top of descent will be calculated from the flight management and guidance system. It has calculated backwards from your approach runway threshold all the way up to your current altitude. It has taken into consideration any descent winds, deceleration, etc. And it will continuously update that starting your descent at the top of descent point will be ideal. You can follow that along the way as long as you're on a managed guidance mode and you're following the flight plan. But more often than not, ATC is going to give you radar vectors coming in to the airport and it means you're no longer flying along that flight plan and descent management is now on you. We also want to make sure that whatever the flight management system has in is actually in line with what we assume. Never be caught off guard by being too high or too low. Ensure that you don't end up high or low because if you're too high for an approach, you may have to risk having to do a rushed descent or even having to do a go around because you're not stable. Or if you're too low, we come down, we have to add power to the engines and that increases the operational cost leading to what we call dragging the aircraft. We want to try to hit that approach straight on as part of the descent and kind of just continue the descent all the way down. When I come down on a descent, I have to do what's called descent management. And descent management is done by comparing the estimated track miles, that's what we calculate, using the formula right here and compare that to the actual track miles to go. That means how many miles are there physically from my current point straight line of sight to that landing threshold. Not on the flight plan. The flight plan might take you all sorts of ways, but direct line of sight. And how can that be calculated? Progress page. On the progress page, you have the option over here to insert a point, a two point, at which you will then calculate the bearing and distance to that point, which could be anything. We do, during our descent preparation, use the landing threshold to have that bearing and distance. It is direct line of sight, distance track miles to go. These are actual track miles to go. So when I calculate my estimated miles, let's say I estimate based on my mental formula here that I need 110 nautical miles to descend 
I look down and I see there's 122 nautical miles, then I know not to start descending yet. Then we come further down, I do the calculations over and over again, and I find out that now I need 50 nautical miles, but there's only 48 nautical miles to go. If I calculate a higher track miles to go, then I am high on my descent profile. If your number is high, you are high. If your number is lower than the track miles to go, you are low. Calculating this once is not enough. With ATC giving you radar vectors, you may find yourself going straight to the airport. Then they're going to give you radar vectors going this way. Then they're going to give you radar vectors going that way. And then radar vectors going straight again. When you're not going straight to the airport, but going here, you may find yourself that your track miles down here, they don't change. But this will, of course, because you are descending, so you'd have to make changes along the way to adjust. Let's look at a little example here and put it into a little bit of context. Remember, this is mental math. This is not complex math done on a piece of paper with your head down in a cockpit. You should continuously do this in your head. So practice during your training will be ideal. I made a little example here where the aircraft is currently at flight level 330. So with an elevation of 109 feet, which is approximately sea level, we have 33,000 feet to drop. Delta flight level 330 divided by 3 gives me 110 nautical miles. So I will require 110 nautical miles from my top of descent all the way down until threshold. But that's not the only thing I'm going to take into consideration because I'm doing this calculation before my top of descent. My estimated landing weight and my current weight, 62 tons, indicated airspeed at this point is 310 knots and I have a 50 knot headwind. So I will correct for the weight being above 60 tons, 2 tons above, I will account for the 310 and for the 50 knot headwind. Headwind decreases the distance, high indicated speed increases the distance, heavy weight increases the distance, and this right here is always an added factor since I have to drop the altitude. I calculate quickly, I need 118 nautical miles from my current state down to threshold. This is based on a delta flight level 330 divided by 3, minus 5 nautical miles because I have a headwind, 10% of 50. I also have here 2 nautical miles added because of the weight being 2 tons above 60 tons, and 11 nautical miles decelerate, 10 nautical miles for 300 knots, and then an additional 1 nautical mile because I'm 10 knots above the 300 giving me 118 nautical miles to descend. We call this estimated track miles to go. If I do a scenario here where I then look to my progress page and my bearing distance to the threshold says I have 122.5 nautical miles actual track miles to go, well then I can see I don't need to stop my descent just yet. I should be doing so when this hits 118 nautical miles. Providing everything stays perfect, I will be able to just descend with the engines in idle all the way down with a 3 degree descent path. But coming down, I should continuously do the calculations in an abbreviated version to make sure I catch and make corrections if I'm high or low. And with ATC giving you radar vectors around the place, you want to find yourself high or low all the time. Let me continue the example here and say I will do one of my calculations here at flight level 180. My speed is now 270. And I'm not taking into consideration the weight or the headwind at this point. I have done that from the top of descent here. This is descent management. So I will just calculate the distance required to descend as well as the distance required to slow down for my current speed. Delta flight level 180 divided by 3, 60. 
and for speeds between 270 and 280 knots I add 7 nautical miles to decelerate so I should require right now 67 nautical miles to go that is estimated track miles if I then estimate that against actual track miles in this case you can see that my actual track miles is 71.1 so my number is lower that means I am low on that descent path if you are lower you're low so I'm actually flying right now below this descent path and if I continue I'm gonna find myself low down here which means I would have to power up the engines to maintain altitude and that is not the most cost-effective way of flying. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.